Hello, and welcome to this video series about using Internet Information Services version 7, also called IIS 7. The techniques will be shown on Windows Vista, and you can do the same things that you see here in the version of IIS 7 that comes along with Windows Server 2008. Distributed configuration is a powerful new feature of IIS 7 that allows delegated management of web application settings at a very granular level. This delegation is configured in files, so for application level settings, it can move with that application as it's copied from server to server. Or when setting up a new web server, you can copy the configuration from an existing server that's already set up the way that you want. In IIS 7, this enhanced ability to provide delegation stems from the sequence in which configuration files are parsed. And here's that sequence. First the machine.config and root web.config, and then the new application host.config file. Pretty much any time we set up a server-wide setting, it ends up here in application host.config. After the server-wide configuration is parsed, then we get down to the individual web.config files for each application. And delegation to subfolders can happen either by just putting web.config files in those subfolders, or by using location elements in web.config files higher up in the chain. Let's open up the application host.config file, which is where we configure the locking that's used with delegation. I'll press shift control enter to run this as administrator. Application host.config is located in the Windows, System32, INET SRV, config folder. Looking at all files, here it is. There's a pretty good description of how locking works right here in these comments. It describes that a section is, among other things, a basic unit of locking. And delegation for a section is established with this override mode default. That's all established at a server-wide level. And then to affect a specific site, you would need to use specific location elements. Delegating to individual web.config files by establishing this override mode equals allow. After this comment section, we get into the configuration itself with the actual sections. A lot of it's denied. Application pools, sites, different web limits. By default, it's only set at the server level. The things that can be delegated by default include the default document and directed browsing, the ability to redirect and establishing which HTTP protocol to use, and validation. This ends all of the configuration sections, and as such we've now seen all the settings that pertain to locking. These configuration sections, along with the override mode default settings, can also be placed in a web.config file. But then only sections that have been marked as override default equals allow will be configurable. So the real way to delegate settings to a specific site is by using location elements that are normally found at the end of the file. Here, anonymous authentication is enabled for the Burton website. Let's try to put this in the web.config file instead. I'll simply cut it from here. And then open up the web.config file that's a part of Burton. That setting needs to be placed underneath the system.webserver section group. Here it is. I'll go ahead and paste it in. Saving this file, let's see what happens when we render a page from the Burton website. This server error talks about related configuration data being invalid for the page. And it further describes that when a section is locked at a parent level, then we need to use override mode default of allow or override mode of allow to enable the setting to be valid. We can't modify the web.config to enable this configuration, so instead we have to go to the next layer up, which is application host.config. And now we get to see the use of override mode. In here, we already have that location element that's focused on the Burton site. And if we wanted, we could apply an attribute that says override mode 
is equal to allow. But what that's really saying is that any of the sections that are configured underneath here can then be overridden. And maybe we don't want that. In fact, let's make it so that these trace failed requests cannot be modified from the web.config file. So instead, we'll need to establish our own location element and leave the one for trace failed requests alone. So what goes inside of here? Well, going back to the web.config file where the setting had been placed, it's underneath system.webserver. So we'll need that. I'll just copy that out. And underneath security, authentication, and it's called anonymous authentication. Copy that out as well. And we'll leave the actual section itself empty. Closing off all these elements. And making them line up so that they're pretty. There's our location element. This is just specifically allowing anonymous authentication to be overridden in any web.config file that's a part of the Burton site. We'll go ahead and save these changes. And then re-rendering the page. Now the site works. We're done with the web.config file for the Burton site, so let's go ahead and close it off now. And we'll turn our attention to another feature for delegation. Right at the server level, we can configure feature delegation. But if you use the version of the Internet Information Services Manager found in Windows Server 2008, then you can configure it at a site level by using custom site delegation. Let's make it so that site administrators can read but not change what the default document is, and that they won't even be able to see the configuration for directory browsing. This remove delegation means that we can still configure it here in our tool, having administrative access on the system, However, site administrators would not be able to. These changes have updated the application host.config file. So if we reload it, then we find at the end that there's a new location element. And it has a blank path, meaning that it affects the whole server. We had said to disallow both the default document and directory browsing and that the default document should still be visible for those other administrators. But the directory browsing should not even be visible. The IS7 management tool allows very specific configuration, and the version of the tool that comes along with Windows Server 2008 even extends this capability further. We hope you've enjoyed this quick look at delegation under IIS7.